Hi, I am Shreya and welcome to Whispers Across Time. The literary echoes of AI. Every so often, a book doesn't just tell a story. It leaves a shadow. It lingers in the background of headlines, algorithms and maybe even startup demos. This episode is about one of those books. George Orwell's 1984 imagined a future shaped by control, illusion and machine-crafted truth. But what if he wasn't predicting doom? Just peeking at an earlier draft of what we are living now. You don't need to know Orwell or AI. Just bring your curiosity. Let's walk into the story together. Imagine a machine not from Silicon Valley, but from a place built on watchful silence and stayed crafted truth. It doesn't think, it doesn't feel, but it creates. Back in 1949, George Orwell imagined such a device in his novel 1984. He called it the versificator. A machine that wrote music not for expression, not for rebellion, but to keep the working class entertained, emotionally lulled and mentally idle. Today, in our world of generative artificial intelligence, Orwell's shadows don't warn, they echo. In Orwell's Ministry of Truth, the versificator hums quietly, writing catchy songs for the prowls. Prowls denote the working class in this novel. It mimics love, mimics pain, but it knows neither. Winston, the story's protagonist, sees it for what it is, mechanical distraction, not art. Today, AI music platforms like Sono or Audio generate melodies, lyrics, even artificial vocals. The symbol what was denoted in 1984 very much. Not because it's dangerous, but because it's brilliantly imagined. Orwell saw the potential of a machine that generates beauty without emotion. An art factory efficient but empty. And it makes us wonder, not with fear, but with awe. How can literature sketch the future with such clarity? But Orwell didn't just write about music. He also foresaw a world where we are surrounded by ice, not human, but built into the walls. Now we'll take a look at telescreens, Big Brother and today's devices. Every room, every corridor in 1984, the telescreen is always on. It plays propaganda, but it also watches. Big Brother isn't a person, he's a presence, a symbol, a reminder. Winston lives with the awareness that every sigh, glance, murmur might be recorded. Today's smart TVs, phones and home assistants also listen. Not from malice, but for convenience. That's the difference. In Orwell's world, surveillance was forced. In ours, it's seamless. This isn't a critique. It is a parallel. A literary echo, not an accusation. Orwell saw the shape of things. That the most powerful forms of monitoring might not arrive as threats, but as features. But what if the screen doesn't just watch your body and actions? What if it senses your mind? Now we'll take a look at the concept of thought crime in 1984. Winston begins his quiet rebellion, not with a weapon, but a thought. Down with Big Brother, he writes his thought in a diary. That alone is considered a thought crime in 1984. It's considered illegal thinking. In 1984, crime isn't just action, it is intention. The danger isn't in revolt, it is in the idea of revolt. 
Today, predictive algorithms try to understand what we will want, what we might say, or what we will do. From language models that auto-complete to systems that guess your stress levels or flag potential threats. Again, not dystopia, but uncanny brilliance. The bridge oral built between inner lives and external systems is startlingly relevant. And how are thoughts shaped in the first place? Through language. Let's step into one of Orwell's most innovative inventions. It's new speak. In Orwell's world, people don't just speak differently, they speak less. The concept is new speak. It is a government engineered language. Its goal to eliminate nuance, abstract thinking and dangerous ideas. If you remove the word freedom, can anyone imagine being free? I don't think so. One character, Syme, celebrates this in the book. It's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. Today, we've done the opposite. Large language models generate more words than any human ever could. Billions every day. But here's the twist. As we prompt these systems, a certain sameness begins to creep in. Prompts echo each other. Styles repeat. Over time, novelty bends toward uniformity. It's not new speak, but it is a poetic reflection of Orwell's concern that when language becomes automated, we risk forgetting how to be original. Winston begins to feel the pressure. Words twist. Truth evaporates. He is asked to believe things he knows are false. To survive, he must somehow learn what every party member does. Double think. So what is double think all about? It is about holding two opposing ideas and believing both. The party says, war is peace. Freedom is slavery. Or maybe ignorance is strength. Winston must believe these, not just pretend. Now, step into today's AI landscape. We say AI is just a tool. We also say AI is humanity's greatest risk. We say we need open AI models. And we also say we must tightly regulate them. We say AI will free us. But we also say AI might replace us. These are in contradictions we resolve. They are tensions we live with. And Orwell's brilliance wasn't in predicting machines. It was in predicting how humans adapt to impossible realities. In the end, Winston tries to resist. He dreams. He loves. He questions. But the system is stronger. And I think that's the case always doesn't just defeat him, it remakes him. Winston is captured, tortured and then rewired. By the end, the man who once whispered rebellion now believes he loved Big Brother. It's not tragedy. I would say it's transformation. That is always genius. Not in inventing villains, but in showing how people change to survive. So, here we are, decades later. Building tools, automating thought, writing with machines. 1984 is not a manual. It's not a prophecy. It is a mirror. One we can choose to look into or walk past. Orwell didn't predict the tools. He glimpsed the tensions between memory and forgetting, between control and creativity, between the language we inherit and the silence we accept. In today's age of artificial intelligence, we are not passive readers of history. We are authors. And every prompt we write is a line in the story. So, as the digital world hums around us, May we remember to listen, 
to question and to write wisely. After all, Big Brother may be watching. We are not in 1984. But we are in a world that 1984 maybe can help us understand. Orville didn't warn us against the future. He gave us a lens to see it more clearly. So, let's keep imagining, keep questioning, keep telling stories. Because in the end, the question isn't whether Big Brother is watching. It's whether we are still watching back. That's it for today. Until next time, may your quiet corners be rich with echoes that know how to listen. Bye.